so these are the prerequisites uh, there are lots of prerequisites so you definitely need to go through uh, each one of them and make sure that you have everything set up before you can start configuring it so in even the purchasing model or uh, if it's not a vcore purchasing model and you're using a basic or a standard version where uh, you have less than 100 etos it will not be supported so make sure that you have something with vcore model or or a minimum uh, of 100 dtus uh, another thing that you need to notice is that uh, you need to have a uh, capacity active which is fine and these two permissions are the tenant level to, uh, to have the service principles uh, you know uh, so that you know uh, to enable the service principles um, ability to actually use the fabric apis so for that you will go to your admin portal in your fabric uh, quickly search for api and if you scroll down you'll see the developer settings service principal can use fabric apis currently it is disabled i will enable that uh, as you can see service principal can use fabric apis so double confirming i will enable that for entire organization you can do it for specific security groups that is the best practice to always limit uh, your blast radius or you know the permission levels uh, for uh, uh, in an organization so you don't have everyone having same level of permissions uh, the other one is users can access uh, if you search with external so if you go to one lake settings uh, there is users can access data stored in one lake with apps external to fabric you need to enable that so that is currently enabled uh, then comes the network requirements networking requirements uh, where your azure sql database needs to have uh, public uh, access enabled uh, you can obviously uh, you know uh, you know uh, reduce the impact by selecting allow azure services and not you know enabling everything so you can do that uh, from your sql server settings so go to your sql server your azure sql server the server and in your security you will have that setting go to networking currently it is selected uh, accessible from selected networks and our uh, azure uh, allow azure services is enabled so that is fine uh, next comes uh, the identity of your azure sql uh, server that is also enabled how you do it is from your security if you select identity you just need to uh, change this uh, radio button to so select on and save it once that is done you can test it by running that query select star from sys.dm server managed identities it will show that whether it's primary or not uh, usually you do not have user user uh, managed identity user created but uh, yeah each to themselves now comes the permissions uh, at the master level you need to create the login and have the server role uh, ms underscore server state rend reader so that's uh, uh, that that's you can just copy it from here uh, change it for yourself uh, i'm using the uh, enter id uh, so so i don't want to have sql authentication for this so i'll create that login with my account uh, it already exists it will should should, should it should throw an error so it already exists that is fine expected uh, and you can see the server role or uh, ms server state reader is required in azure sql uh, master it's a master database for your azure sql server and then uh, you need uh, the below permissions uh, select alter any external mirror on the user itself uh, on the database itself where which you want to mirror so you will switch the context uh, in your ssms to the database that you want to mirror and from there you will run this these queries so you will create the user uh, based on the login that you created previously uh, whether you are using sql uh, authenticated user or managed uh, you know uh, sorry the entra user you can uh, any of that do any of that so in this case we are using intra user for my case the permissions granted uh, now we are i think ready to create 
the mirror let me go back to our fabric portal from here I will select new item I'll go to my root folders and let me just select new item here you can see the option for Microsoft Azure SQL database is available and managed instance as well which is currently in preview so I'll, I'll select that and let's walk through the configuration and let me select a new source I have done this previously so uh, there should be a connection already available but I'll just walk through all the process uh, you need the server details so you go to your SQL server and from here you should be able to fetch the server name copy it go back and just paste it here In the database name which again you can get it from the Azure portal I'll just copy this go back paste that uh, it has identified uh, existing connection but I don't want to use it just want to show you how to do it so I'll just rename this connection to mirror and the authentication kind there are three types basic organizational account or service principal in this case I will use organizational account and this is my account that we just configured click connect and it should connect to the data source and fetch all the tables for you to configure you can see there is an automatically mirror future tables uh, checkbox uh, that is uh, by default enabled so make sure uh, you disable it if you don't want any, any future tables to be uh, mirrored in fabric so uh, in this case it is currently doing some checks and it is checking whether the tables are you know compliant with all the requirements for mirroring and you can so uh, you can see there is there are these uh, warnings that's available uh, warnings that popped out and it says there is uh, unsupported data types which we will have to you know either uh, if you want them to bring in you'll have to change the data types and everything uh, so which is not something that we will be doing but if you want to know all the limitations you can go to the uh, uh, to the same uh, Microsoft documentation and you will see uh, the list of uh, limitations that's available um, for this particular uh, mirroring configuration so uh, let me go back to the limitations uh, there are uh, you know different levels of limitations so at the database level and at the permission level the network level and uh, the, the table level and then the column level so at the database level uh, it, it, it your source database should be a writable primary database uh, it should not have uh, you know a pre-configured uh, cdc or synapse link or uh, it, it, it should uh, not be a mirror already so and then the, the limitation of 500 tables and so on uh, there are permission level uh, limitations as well uh, network and security as well so uh, if you see we have already uh, given those permission level limitations that it was talking about and, uh, and in terms of network and security we have allowed public network access and uh, allowed Azure uh, services you know to connect to our Azure SQL database so uh, after that is the table level uh, there are lots and lots of limitations here so just have a look at all of them and make sure all your data types uh, comply with the requirements if not uh, obviously your uh, configuration uh, wizard will already uh, give you a warning which you can fix and go ahead and you know uh, reconfigure it again so these are the types of uh, data types that's not supported uh, if you see a table cannot be mirrored if it has json or vector data types or or basically uh, or everything that it doesn't support is mentioned here and if i scroll down at the column level you will also see the data types that it doesn't support the user defined uh, data types are not supported uh, which is the case for adventure works where uh, one of the you know uh, name uh, data type is user defined so that's that pops up most of the times for azure uh, for the adventure works uh, database if you see these are the column level uh, limitations uh, 
all these data types are not supported and the user defined data type is not supported and you can see it has popped up in the warning section which is good enough and in our case we will not be configuring it for all of them so we will just select the ones that are already complying with your requirements because we just want to see how mirroring works rather than uh, making our source changes to uh, make it work so in this case we will just select the ones that comply we'll change the database name in the destination to a mirror uh, i'm just adding this mirror suffix so i know it's a mirror whenever i use it and once i select create mirror database it should walk you through these steps this is what is happening it is provisioning mirroring da mirrored database then it will provision sql analytics endpoint for your uh, mirror database then it will configure replication and then it will start replication so that's the steps that's currently going on uh, currently we are at the configuration configuring replication st stage and this window or this page should open up itself you can see the status is currently running and on top you can see uh, it, it is currently running so it has an option to stop replication which obviously we do not want so it all looks good uh, after some time it should uh, show us uh, the tables that it has replicated And currently it's running, if you can see the status. Let's quickly have a look at the item level lineage for this mirror database. It doesn't show anything before the mirror. It shows the SQL analytics endpoint that got created from this uh, mirror database and then the semantic model so that's the l lineage view uh, yeah this is where you uh, if you remember uh, sql server management studio had a replication monitor it looks uh, something like that you can see uh, as per documentation after some time we will have the uh, you know last refresh or last completed uh, column updated so currently uh, the last completed uh, column is empty it doesn't so that means it has not completed your initial snapshot or initial uh, data movement uh, so currently it is in progress let's quickly refresh this again and as you can see 519 pm 519 pm so uh, rose replicated was 762 for dpo and there was another sales lt uh, it is okay build version table is available and i can see the record as well so the record is available i do not see the sales okay the sales lt uh, is also available uh, it was a different schema so it is not in the dbo but in sales lt I have refreshed it so it should have all the data the sales LT product description table is also available with all the data it looks good uh, okay so what we will go will do now is uh, add a record in this table from SQL Server Management Studio and once we add that record a uh, we should have like uh, you know the real-time replication of that data in our fabric uh, workspace in the, in the mirror database so we will be querying the sql analytics endpoint and of that mirror database after we have updated a record uh, or added a record so let's quickly add a record here let's go to ssms and this is a test record that I'm adding got added successfully let me go back let me execute this if I scroll down the last entry should be a new record with description test which I can see so this data has been added to the source now it should replicate 
itself to our mirrored database let's go back to our fabric workspace this is the replication monitor uh, or the you know uh, the monitor <laughs> replication monitor or monitor replication so same same stuff uh, you can see currently uh, the last completed was 519 so we have not seen the data yet uh, into the mirror let's uh, it might take a couple of minutes but let let it take its time let, let, let by that time let's do a count star in our source it's 763 and let's go back to our mirror i think by now we should have rose replicated uh, 763 okay that is good so it has reinitialized so it uh, okay so rose replicated 763 that looks good again and if we want to query this table and want to look at that particular record that we added we should be able to do it let's select top 10 let's do a select count star first and it should be 763 that checks out lastly we just want to see that record with description equals to test so if you see uh, when the column name doesn't exactly match the case you get an error in delta table so you need to make sure that your uh, whenever you do a select uh, your you know you actually match the case of the exact uh, column name so that's that's all for today you can see uh, we have completed a quick session on fabric mirroring thanks for watching